I've had a couple of questions on a couple of my other videos about ESC calibration and the process for ESC calibration so I thought it would be worthwhile just doing a very quick video to show the process in detail and explain why you need to do it. What we're going to use here for this is for the bench test we use a little 3S LiPo running a ESC that we're going to program. We need it connected to a motor because the beeps that you hear from ESCs don't actually come from this. They actually come from the motor itself and it's by um, sending a high frequency pulse to the windings in here. And obviously we have a receiver that's connected through the throttle channel. Now, in something like a uh, multi-copter, this wire is actually connected into the controller, so the KK2.0 APM or multi-way, but when you're manually calibrating the um, ESC, the, but one of the best ways to do it is plug it directly into the throttle. Now the process I'm going to go through here is a very common one, although what I'd suggest is always read the manual that comes with the speed controller that you're using. This is a Hobby King uh, 20 amp speed controller. Um, the Turnigy ones I've used are the same, the Phoenix um, controllers that are exactly the same, and actually uh, the instructions are identical whether you're reading them on google.com, on hobbyking.com, on ardupilot.com. Um, so this is a very common way of doing it, but just be careful, double check that yours works this way too. So what we'll do is we'll actually power this up and I'll show you the challenge that we have with the speed controller because it hasn't been calibrated. So here's the radio. There's the motor at the top. I'm going to plug it in. Those little beeps you heard were actually coming from the motor. Now, what happens is, as I move the throttle, you'll notice for the first bit, it doesn't kick in, and then the motor will start. So I've got that much throttle movement, nothing's happening. If I continue up, there it is, it's starting there. Now what that means is that this ESC thinks that the lower end point is there, where actually it should be there. So programming or calibrating ESCs is about telling the ESC where the high point of the throttle is and where the low point of the throttle is. And the process is pretty straightforward. So let's recalibrate this one so it works on the full range of the throttle. First thing you do is power off the ESC motor. Always make sure that your props are off when you're doing this. It's dangerous to have anything else. Then what you do is you increase the throttle to the very top, as far as it'll go, and then you power up the system. And what you'll hear is the speed controller will beep once and then beep every three or four seconds. So now it's waiting to hear what the low throttle position is. And if I move the throttle to the bottom, it's now telling me it's ready, and as soon as I move the throttle from the bottom, rather than have that dead band, it's actually running straight away. So that's now calibrated, and if we unplug it, next time we plug it in, it remembers and stores those endpoints. So that it'll work every time. So again, that process is very straightforward. What you do, throttle to the very top. That, then when you power on the ESC, shows it what 100% is like. Then put the throttle down to the lowest throttle position. Wait for the confirmation tones. And then there you are. you have it calibrated for your radio. If you're doing this um, on something like a quadcopter, I would advise that you do each of the ESCs in turn as one of the last things on the model because you don't want to change any of the other settings. This is just a way to make sure that all the ESCs that are connected, because having one that has that dead band is painful enough, but if any one of the ESCs isn't identically configured on a multi-rotor, you're going to have a lot of problems. So hopefully that's useful for those of you who have been thinking about this or if you're new into the hobby and looking for a simple demonstration. But as I said before, double check that that's the process for your speed controller 
but for everyone that I've used so far, that's been the way to do it. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and happy flying.